Welcome to the Commander's Beacon. I'm Eric, and we're here to talk about some unconventional ways that you might build your commander deck. Kind of like buying a new toothbrush each time you brush your teeth. That's what they do with rocket ships. Well, at least they did until SpaceX came along. But anyways, I digress. Uh, today we're looking at a new deck tech from Commander Legends featuring a new partner commander. Uh, that's right, we have figured out how to use the Ghost of Ramirez di Pietro. And today we are playing Esper Cycling. Okay, let's talk about the Ghost of Ramirez di Pietro. This is a handsome 2-3 Spirit Pirate that costs 2 and a blue. It can't be blocked by creatures with toughness 3 or greater, uh, so anything that blocks it will die unless it has first strike or indestructible. And whenever Ghost of Ramirez di Pietro deals combat damage to a player, uh, you choose up to one target card in a graveyard that was discarded there or put there from a library this turn, and you put that card into its owner's hand. Now, at first glance, this is a fairly underwhelming ability, and at second glance, well, not much changes. Uh, this is a once-per-turn conditional graveyard recursion, and it has three pretty strict conditions. First, Ghost of Ramirez di Pietro must attack and deal combat damage to a player. A second, the card that is recurred from the graveyard must have been put there this turn. And third, that card must specifically have been put into your graveyard from your library, or by discarding it, and not by any other means. Uh, you can't sacrifice a permanent, for example, and then recur it later that turn with Ramirez. So even when you meet all of these conditions, you're getting one additional card per round of the table, um, with the exception of maybe giving Ramirez double strike or, you know, additional combat steps. Now, currently on EDH Rec, uh, Ghost of Ramirez di Pietro is a partner in 46 decks. Uh, 33 of those are with Torma the Desecrator, and that makes sense. Um, uh, whenever you trigger Ramirez's ability to return a card from your graveyard to your hand, uh, Tormod makes a zombie token creature. Uh, none of the other partners have five or more decks paired with Ramirez at this time, so we can't currently see deck lists for any of them other than Tormod. So we are going to pair Ramirez with Ravos Soul Tender. This is another handsome 2-2 human cleric with flying that costs 3 black white. It gives all of your other creatures plus 1 plus 1, so this is a nice pointless little anthem. Uh, but primarily it lets you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand at the beginning of your upkeep. So what do Ramirez and Ravos have in common, uh, besides of course exceptional handsomeness? Well, they both return stuff from your graveyard to your hand. So it's this commonality that we'll focus on today. Uh, we're going to pair Ramirez and Ravos in a cycling deck. Uh, so just for reference, cycling is an ability that appears on some cards. Uh, a card with cycling can be discarded at any time from your hand by paying the cycling cost. And then you draw a card. So cards with cycling have some added versatility, uh, letting you cash them in for another card if you don't need whatever effect the card has. Already have more lands than you need? Uh, you can pay a black mana to cycle Baron Moor, so you discard it to draw another card. Uh, cast Out is an enchantment that exiles a permanent for three and a white, uh, but if you don't need the removal right now, you can instead cycle it for one white mana. Now, recently in Commander 2020 and Ikoria, a bunch of new cycling cards were released, uh, along with a cycling-themed commander deck. Uh, that deck was headed by Gavi Nest Warden. So the first thing we want to think of when building a cycling deck is how does it compare to Gavi? So Gavi is a 2-5 human shaman that costs 2 white red blue. Uh, it lets you pay 0 rather than paying the cycling cost for the first card you cycle each turn. Uh, note this includes your opponent's turns too, so you can cycle up to 4 cards for free in a single round of the table uh, in your typical 4 player game. And Gavi also says whenever you draw your second card each turn, you create a 2-2 red and white dinosaur cat creature token. So this means if you cycle just a single card on your turn, you'll get that creature token because this is also going to count that card you drew at the beginning of your uh, draw step. Or you can just use any other means, of course, for that card draw as well. Now, Gavi builds can fiddle with how much emphasis they place on the token creature generation or on the cycling, 
but pretty much any deck is going to invest heavily in cycling regardless. So there's two primary differences in building cycling with Gavi compared to Ramirez and Ravos. First, Gavi rewards you by making your cycling stronger by reducing the cost. Now, in the long run, this can save you a bunch of mana, as most cards will cycle for 1-2 to two mana, but some cost more, and sometimes a lot more. A dismantling Wave, for example, destroys up to one uh, enchantment or artifact each opponent controls, but if you cycle it for 8 mana, 6 and 2 white, it destroys all artifacts and enchantments. Decree of Silence, this is an enchantment that uh, counters the next 3 spell casts, but you can cycle it for 4 and 2 blue to counter target spell. And if you're a jerk, you can use Decree of Annihilation, which exiles all artifacts, creatures, lands, graveyards, and hands from the game. But if you cycle it for 5 and 2 red, you just destroy all lands. Uh, now when Gavi reduces the cost of these cycling effects to 0, the impact can be devastating. Uh, Dismantling Wave is a free board wipe. Uh, Decree of Silence is a free counter spell. Uh, Decree of Annihilation is free mass land destruction, and so on. And remember too that you can cycle cards at instant speed, and cycling is not casting a spell, so these effects are immune to counter magic. So when we say that Gavi powers up your cycling, this is what we mean. Uh, she lets you cycle more often by saving you mana. Uh, Ramirez and Ravos are a bit different. Uh, the average Gavi cycling deck on EDH rec has 42 cards with cycling. Now, while many deck themes have maybe 20, 30 cards that fit the theme, like enchantments or vampires or something, uh, cycling decks generally seem to require a greater investment. You'll typically need more cards with cycling in a cycling deck in order to be successful than you would, say, vampires in a vampire deck. And that's because cycling decks almost always want to be cycling cards. Maybe at least one card per round of the table, but probably more. Now, which you go without saying, only cards with cycling can be cycled. So if the average Gavi deck has 42 cards with cycling, that means it has 57 cards in the deck that don't have cycling. So whenever you cycle a card, this means you'll have less than a 50-50 chance to draw another card with cycling. And that means that as you repeatedly cycle cards, your hand will start to have fewer and fewer cycling cards in it, especially if you don't have extra sources of card draw. And a cycling deck with no cycling cards in hand is kind of dead in the water. So that long-winded description is basically just revealing a vulnerability of cycling decks. And when we use Ramirez and Ravos as our commanders, they can help us to mitigate this vulnerability. Uh, for each of our commanders that's online and doing its thing, we basically get one instance per round of ch changing cycling from a loot effect, that is uh, discarding a card to draw a card, into a pure draw effect. Think of it this way. Uh, with Gavi, Curator of Mysteries says, uh, pay a blue and discard this card from your hand to draw a card. Uh, with Ramirez and Ravos, instead it situationally says, pay a blue to draw a card once per turn, if Curator of Mysteries is in your hand. Uh, so our chances of running out of cards to cycle is much lower uh, with Ramirez and Ravos than it is with Gavi. Uh, so while Gavi can amp up your cycling effects into the stratosphere, uh, Ramirez and Ravos give you a lot more resilience and card advantage. Okay. So that was just the first difference between Gavi and uh, Ramirez plus Ravos. The second difference between Gavi and Ramirez plus Ravos is that both decks will have access to blue and white, but Gavi adds red, whereas Ramirez and Ravos add black. Now again, Ikoria and Commander 2020 added a lot of good Jeskai cycling cards and cycling payoffs, but there were a reasonable number available before Ikoria too. Now we'll lose access to the red ones here, most notably, for example, Tectonic Reformation is an enchantment that gives each land in your hand cycling for one red mana. This is amazing because it basically adds about 25 cycling cards to your deck, uh, as long as it's in play. Uh, remember that the average Gavi deck has you know, about 37 lands on EDH rec, and only 12 of them have cycling by default. Uh, Lightning Rift is another example. This is an enchantment that lets you pay one whenever you cycle a card to shock any target for two damage. Uh, this can be a finisher or removal, though it's a little bit mana intensive. Uh, Unpredictable Cyclone is an uh, enchantment that buffs up your cycling effects. It basically says instead of drawing a card when you cycle, you'll reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card uh, that shares a type with the card that you cycled. Uh, for example, an instant or sorcery. Uh, and then you cast that card without paying its mana cost. 
So this cheats you on mana costs, which is great, but it's also a bit expensive at 5 mana, and because it's random, the power level of this card is a little bit limited, uh, unless you're doing some top deck manipulation, maybe. And lastly, I want to mention Bralin, Skyshark Rider, uh, Dranith Stinger, and Glinthorn Buccaneer. Uh, these all drain the table, and over time they can actually do a lot of damage. Uh, Bralin and Glinthorn Buccaneer do 1 damage to each opponent when you discard a card, uh, for example, when you cycle a card. Uh, Dranith Stinger also deals 1 damage to each opponent when you cycle a card. Uh, so in a cycling deck, all of these pretty much do the same thing. Uh, they add 1 damage onto each opponent whenever you cycle something. And if your deck gets going, you'll probably cycle a couple of cards or more each round, so this damage will add up. Uh, anyways, if we play Ramirez and Ravos, we won't be able to use any of these cards. But I think actually swapping red for black gives us even stronger cycling payoffs. Uh, let's talk about what we'll have access to. Faith of the Devoted is an enchantment that lets you pay 1 whenever you cycle a card to drain each opponent for 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Uh, this will kill your opponents much faster than Lightning Rift, uh, since it hits all opponents and it sustains you in the process. Uh, that said, it can't be used to remove uh, creatures or planeswalkers like, light like Lightning Rift can. Uh, Decree of Pain is a great black creature board wipe that also refills your hand. Uh, it does cost a whopping 8 mana to kill all creatures, but you draw cards equal to the number of creatures that died this way. Uh, or you can cycle it for 5 mana, and when you do, all creatures get minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn. Now, red had Surly Badger Sore, but in black we get Bone Miser instead. Uh, each of these give us some bonus when we uh, discard, that is, again, cycle, a card, uh, based on the type of that card. Uh, when you cycle a creature, Surly Badger Sore gets a plus one plus one counter, but it doesn't have any evasion to take advantage of being big. Uh, Bone Miser makes a 2 2 zombie token, uh, which I think is far more valuable. Uh, when you discard a land card, Surly Badger Sore makes you a treasure token. Uh, which can be sacrificed for one mana of any color. Uh, Bone Miser adds two black mana to your mana pool right now. I'll call this one a tie. Uh, Surly Badger Sore lets you stockpile that mana in the form of treasure tokens, uh, so you can use it when you need it. Uh, with Bone Miser, you need to use that mana right away, but you get twice as much of it. And when you cycle a non land, non creature card, uh, Surly Badger Sore fights a creature while Bone Miser draws you a card. Now, if you've been cycling a lot of creatures, uh, Surly Badger Sore will be big, and that fight trigger can be devastating. Uh, but if not, Surly Badger Sore can't fight too much without dying, as it's only a 3-3 by default. Uh, drawing a card with Bone Miser, however, is always useful. Archfiend of Ifnir is a perpetual board wipe for only your opponent's creatures that gets around Indestructible and Regenerate. It's a creature that has, whenever you cycle or discard a card, put a minus one minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. This can be devastating. Uh, swapping black for red also gives you access to all of black's powerful tutoring effects. Uh, for this deck specifically, we'll mention Razaketh's Right. This lets you search your library for any card to put into your hand. It costs five mana, but if that's a bit too steep at the moment, you can just cycle it away for one black. And then there's Shadow of the Grave. Uh, this is an instant for 2 mana that returns all cards you cycled or discarded this turn from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, remember how cycling decks need to run a bunch of cycling cards, like 40 or more? Uh, yeah, Shadow of the Grave can be nuts, and it's an instant and it's only 2 mana. Well, I hope by now I've convinced you why you should consider this Esper cycling deck over uh, Gavi's Jeskai cycling. Uh, w wait, what? You were already convinced? Well, why didn't you say so? All right, then let's just get into the deck tech. So, as we said earlier, a typical cycling deck might furiously cycle cards in and out of their hand until, you know, just by probability, their hand contains no more cards to cycle. If we have Ravos or Ramirez working, though, cycling cards just adds to our hand size rather than, you know, just filtering a card. Now under these conditions, we'll play sort of like a Feather the Redeemed deck, and that deck might play a cantrip like, you know, Defiant Strike each turn, and then that card returns to their hand in addition to the card they draw from Defiant Strike. And add to that the fact that such a deck might not cast too many permanents from its hand, since it might just be recasting the same instants and sorceries over and over for value, uh, and those spells just re get returned to the hand from Feather's ability. So Feather decks, despite being in Boros, will often have a full grip of 7 cards or more. So why do we care about Feather? 
uh, because with Ramirez and Ravos, this deck can play pretty similarly in this regard. Uh, whatever we cycle will just return to our hand whenever Ramirez or Ravos is around, uh, but we're still drawing a card from cycling. So we net one card into our hand each time we do this. Uh, now, in order to retain value and prevent us from having to discard down to seven cards at the end of the turn, which is a reasonable concern in a deck like this, I've included several cards that increase our maximum hand size. Uh, Magic Mirror is an artifact that costs 9, that's 6 and 3 blue, but its cost is reduced by 1 for each instant and sorcery in our graveyard. Uh, we won't drop this onto the battlefield as fast as an Izzet Spellslinger deck, but we're running 18 instants and sorceries, so we'll typically reduce the cost by 2 or 3 mana or so, which is just fine. Uh, Magic Mirror has those magical words, uh, you have no maximum hand size. You also put a knowledge counter on it at the beginning of your upkeep, and then draw a card for each knowledge counter on it. Uh, so it does nothing right away, but at the beginning of your next turn you'll draw an extra card, uh, the, turn extra, uh, the turn afterwards you'll draw two extra cards, and so on. Uh, this is an inevitability. If our opponents don't answer this within a couple of turns, we'll generate overwhelming card advantage. Uh, of course, we'll also run Reliquary Tower and Thought Vessel. Uh, Reliquary Tower is a land that taps for colorless, and Thought Vessel is a mana rock that uh, costs 2 and it taps for colorless. Uh, both of these give us no maximum hand size. Venser's Journal is an artifact that costs 5 and gives us, you guessed it, no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we'll gain 1 life for each card in our hand. Now, I typically wouldn't recommend Venser's Journal for most decks, but this deck plays more of a slow, incremental value strategy, uh, and because we have the capacity to keep a lot of cards in our hand, that life gain can really help our sustain. And finally, we've got Nezahal Primal Tide. This is a 7-7 legendary dinosaur that costs 5 and 2 blue. It can't be countered, it gives us no maximum hand size, and whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, we draw a card. Again, ludicrous card advantage. And you can also discard three cards to exile Neza Hall and return it to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of your next end step. So we can dodge targeted removal and board wipes. Now you won't always have your Ramirez or Ravos engines going. Maybe there's just too much removal going around, or Ramirez can't get in for combat damage, or whatever happens. So we do have a few other ways to draw cards too, uh, in addition to the ludicrous filtering we get from cycling. Uh, like any reasonable cycling deck, we need uh, Teferi's Ageless Insight. This is an enchantment that costs 2 and 2 blue. It doubles up each of our card draws, except the first card we draw each turn during our draw step. Uh, that means whenever I cycle a card, I discard that card to draw two cards instead of one. Uh, Ancient Excavation is an instant that costs 2 and 2 blue. It lets us draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand, then discard that many cards. Of course, Ravos and Ramirez can help us recover any of those cards that we've discarded to this effect. Uh, Ancient Excavation can also be cycled to get any basic land out of our library for 2 mana. And lastly, I want to talk about Bag of Holding. This is sort of our replacement for Ravos and Ramirez. This is an artifact that costs 1, and it says whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Uh, you can also pay 2 and tap it to draw a card, then discard a card. And you can pay 4 and tap and sacrifice it to return all cards exiled with it to your hand. So whenever we cycle a card with Bag of Holding on the battlefield, that cycled card won't go to our graveyard, it will go to exile instead. Uh, then we can sacrifice Bag of Holding to get all those cycling cards back into our hand to use again. Now, I do need to caution that you generally don't want to have Bag of Holding on the battlefield with Ravos or Ramirez because it prevents um, any card that you cycle from being recurred from the graveyard by your commanders. Because those cards won't be in the graveyard, they'll be in exile. But if there's too much heat on the battlefield for you to keep your commanders around, a Bag of Holding is a decent alternative. Just be mindful of when you play it, because it can be a non-bow with your strategy, uh, if it's used incorrectly. Now let's talk about tokens. Uh, like a Gavi cycling deck, our deck runs several cards that let us generate miscellaneous token creatures. Uh, these permanents that do this will generally accrue us value over time rather than, rather than dumping a bunch of tokens onto the battlefield at once. Uh, so given enough time to build up, these tokens can easily overwhelm our opponents uh, and become a possible win condition. So where do our tokens come from? Uh, Drakehaven, Spirit Cairn, and Valiant Rescuer each generate creature tokens whenever we cycle cards. 
Uh, Drake Haven is an enchantment that makes a 2 2 blue Drake creature token with flying whenever we cycle a card, if we pay one mana. A Spirit Cairn is similar and then it generates a 1 1 white spirit creature token whenever a player discards a card, uh, but again, we do have to pay one might mana to this trigger uh, to get it to resolve. But we don't really have any discard effects in this deck other than cycling, so most of these triggers will come from cycling cards. And Valiant Rescuer is a 3-1 human soldier that makes a 1-1 white human creature token uh, whenever we cycle our first card each turn. Uh, no mana payment is necessary. Uh, we already briefly mentioned Tormod the Desecrator. This is a 4-2 zombie wizard that costs 3 and a black, and whenever one or more cards leave our graveyard, we make a tapped 2-2 zombie creature token. Now this deck isn't built to abuse Tormod, but it will give us value up to once per round from each of our commander's triggered abilities. So we could be making up to two zombies for per round, you know, one from Ravos and one from Ramirez. There's a few other cards in this deck too that take cards out of our graveyard to trigger Tormod. Uh, for larger creature tokens, we have typical cycling payoffs. Uh, Hoofprints of the Stag is an enchantment that gets a hoofprint counter whenever we draw a card, uh, including, of course, uh, whenever we cycle a card. And we can pay two and a white and remove four hoofprint counters from it to create a 4-4 white elemental creature token with flying. Uh, but we can only use this ability during our turn. And then there's Ominous Seas. This is another enchantment that similarly gets a counter, uh, in this case a foreshadow counter, uh, whenever we draw a card. And we can remove eight such counters to create an 8-8 Kraken token, uh, but this can be activated at any time. Ominous Seas can also be cycled for two mana. But outside of making tokens, we do have other cycling synergies in this deck. Uh, most of them are pretty standard for cycling decks, so I won't spend too much time on them, but I do want to make you aware of them just in case. Uh, Fluctuator is an artifact that costs 2, and it reduces the cost of cycling abilities uh, that you activate by 2 mana. And note that this doesn't have a maximum reduction, like for example Zerda, which reduces the cost of activated abilities, but it can't reduce them to less than 1 mana. Uh, Fluctuator definitely can reduce cycling costs to zero mana, provided of course they don't have any colored mana in that cycling cost, uh, since Fluctuator won't reduce colored mana costs. Uh, this is a cycling staple, I don't really need to defend it too much. Then you've got Astral Slide and Astral Drift, these are typical white cycling payoffs. Uh, these are enchantments that let you exile a creature whenever you cycle a card, and that creature returns to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. The functionalities of these enchantments are infinite, and infinitely frustrating for your opponents. Uh, Blightsteel Colossus swinging at you? No, it's not. Just cycle a card at instant speed anytime you feel like you need to do so, and that Blightsteel Colossus disappears for a while. Your opponents want to remove your Ravos or your Nezahol, or wipe the board? Not if you have a mana or two open and the cycling card in hand. You can exile your own creatures to dodge almost any type of removal. Abandoned Sarcophagus is an artifact that lets us cast cards that have cycling from our graveyard, but if a card with cycling would be put into our graveyard from anywhere and it wasn't cycled, we have to exile it instead. So this lets us basically cycle a card, then cast it later, but once we cast it, it can never go back into the graveyard or it'll be exiled. Now this will give a lot of resilience to a deck like Gavi, which can't as readily reuse its cycling cards otherwise. Now, with Ravos and Ramirez, we won't see as much value from Abandoned Sarcophagus, but it's still a really good card and worthy of an include here. A Crystalline Resonance is a blue enchantment that can become a copy of any permanent until your next turn, whenever you cycle a card. This is basically the cycling version of Mirage Mirror. If you didn't know, Mirage Mirror is a good card, so you should probably run Crystalline Resonance. I don't need to say this. Uh, notice too that Crystalline Resonance can copy any permanent, while Mirage Mirror can only copy artifacts, enchantments, creatures, and lands. Uh, that said, the only other permanent type is Planeswalker, and if you copied a Planeswalker with Crystalline Resonance, it would have zero loyalty and die immediately, so don't do that. Psychosis Crawler is a classic. This is an artifact creature that costs 5 and has power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand, and it causes each opponent to lose 1 life whenever you draw a card. Again, this includes whenever you cycle a card. And finally, we've got a little bit of jank, I guess, with Undead Gladiator. This is a 3-1 zombie barbarian that lets you pay one in a black and discard a card to return it uh, from your graveyard to your hand, but only during your upkeep. And it has cycling for one in a black. So this is basically an inefficient recursive emergency cycling enabler. 
Uh, Ramirez and Ravos will give you much better recursive value, but if they're disabled for any reason, uh, it's pretty hard for your opponents to stop Undead Gladiator. Uh, this will basically let you filter through your deck to find whatever it is you need, but only once per turn and for four mana at a time. So you spend two mana to return the Gladiator to your hand, and then two mana to cycle it again. Now, I wouldn't do this most of the time, but it can be useful if you're just out of other options and you really need to dig a little bit further into your deck. Let's take a brief moment to talk about our foundational pieces, that is our ramp and our removal. Uh, there's not too much noteworthy here, so we won't spend too much time on this section, but again, please see the deck list in the, in the description if you want more information. Uh, first, let's get ramp out of the way. We're running eight mana rocks. Uh, we've already mentioned Thought Vessel. Uh, the others are Arcane Signet and the three Esper Signets and Talismans. Uh, these are all pretty efficient at two mana each, and they can each tap for two different colors. I don't really need to say too much more about them here. For removal, I'm trying to use mostly pieces that have cycling, though, are, though there are a few exceptions. Uh, Ruthless Sniper is slow and unassuming, but it will pick off a lot of creatures over time if left alone. Uh, this is a 1-2 human archer that costs black, and whenever you cycle or discard a card, you can pay 1 to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature. Uh, neutralize is basically cancel. Hint, never play cancel. Uh, but at least neutralize can be cycled, so we'll take it. Nimble Obstructionist, on the other hand, is amazing. This is a 3-1 bird wizard that can be cycled for 2 and a blue, and when you cycle it, you counter target triggered or activated ability. Uh, you can surprise shut down an opponent's Planeswalker ultimate, but they'll still lose the loyalty, of course. Uh, you can change Aetherflux Reservoir from reading pay 50 life to do 50 damage to instead just lose 50 life to keep things fair and balanced because you're such a nice person. And because this is a cycling trigger, it can't be counterspelled. Uh, of course, we'll play Akroma's Vengeance because we need board wipes, and this is another one that cycles. Uh, really, if you just pick the removal that has cycling, you can't go too wrong. Uh, we're running 13 targeted and mass kill spells, and 9 of them have cycling. And finally, let's talk about some of the cool tech that our deck has access to. Uh, Entomb is usually excellent in any deck that will play it, and it's excellent here as well. Uh, this is an instant that just costs black, and it lets you search your library for any card and put that card into your graveyard. If you've got Ravos on the battlefield and you cast this at the end of the turn before yours, you can tutor any creature into your graveyard from your library, uh, perhaps an Archfiend of Ifnir or Nezahal, and then Ravos lets you put that card into your hand at the beginning of your upkeep with his trigger. Or if you've got Ramirez out and attacking, you can use Entomb to tutor anything into your graveyard, a cast Entomb during combat if Ramirez is unblocked, and suddenly he'll tutor whatever you want into your hand from your library, basically. I really like that this is instant speed and it only costs one mana, uh, because whatever you tutored into your graveyard from your library, you'll really be able to minimize your opponent's ability to prevent you from then putting that card from your graveyard into your hand with either of your commanders. Uh, next, because Ramirez needs to get in for combat damage, there's several cycling cards that will help him do it. Uh, Ikoria released a series of creatures with cycling, uh, one in each color, and these cards, uh, when they're cycled, they'll put an ability counter on target creature. Those ability counters will permanently give that creature the um, keyword ability, well, unless some effect removes that counter, uh, of course. So we're using Splendor Mare, Avian Oddity, and Void Beckoner. Each of these can be cast as a creature, but we won't often do that. Typically, we'll cycle them to put that ability counter on a creature, uh, for example, on Ramirez, on our turn before we attack. And then if we get in for combat damage to a player, uh, Ramirez can return that card to our hand. A Splendor Mare can cycle for one and a white to put a lifelink counter on a creature. Uh, Avian Oddity can cycle for two and a blue to put a flying counter on a creature. And Void Beckoner can cycle for two and a black to put a death touch counter on a creature. Now, Splendor Mare will just return us a little bit of life, but Avian Oddity and Void Beckoner can help Ramirez get in for combat damage uh, by giving him flying or, you know, by discouraging blockers by giving him death touch. And remember, these ability counters are permanent. Uh, so when Ramirez returns these to our hand, we can cycle them again next turn to boost another creature. Uh, speaking of other creatures to give these abilities to, we're running Flourishing Fox and Vile Manifestation. Uh, each of these get bigger when we cycle cards in some way or another. Uh, Flourishing Fox is a 1-1 that costs 1 white, 
and it gets a plus one plus one counter whenever we cycle a card. Uh, it'll get big, but it has no evasion. Uh, fortunately, the cards that we use to help Ramirez do combat damage, uh, those you know, Void Beckoner, Avian Oddity, and Splendor Mare, uh, they can also be used on Flourishing Fox. Uh, Flourishing Fox can also be cycled for one. Uh, Vile Manifestation is a 0-4 that costs 1 and a black, but it gets plus 1 plus 0 for each card with cycling in our graveyard. Again, no evasion, but we can buff it with those um, cycling creatures that give the permanent ability counters. Uh, Vile, Manifesta Vile Manifestation can also be cycled for 2. Uh, to be honest, these creatures aren't great, uh, but the fact that they have a low mana cost, they can be cycled, uh, and they have the potential to be big, uh, makes them playable, I think. Though perhaps just barely. Uh, we're also running Windcaller Aven and Dirge of Dread. Uh, these function similarly in helping Ramirez get in for combat damage uh, to trigger his ability. Windcaller Aven can cycle for blue to give a target creature flying until end of turn, and Dirge of Dread can be cycled for one into black to give target creature fear until end of turn. Uh, for reference, a creature with fear can't be blocked except by black creatures or artifact creatures. So both of these help Ramirez get in for combat damage. A Dirge of Dread can also be used if we've amassed a large army of token creatures to smash in for a lot of damage too, uh, because we can cast the spell for two into black instead of cycling it, and if we do, it's a sorcery that gives all creatures fear until end of turn. Now for a little bit of redundancy and creature protection, we're running Whisper Silk Cloak and Mage's Guile. Now Whisper Silk Cloak is an equipment that gives the equipped creature Shroud and Unblockable, so this will help Ramirez deal combat damage to a player, or just protect one of our key creatures by giving it Shroud. Uh, Mage's Guile is an instant for one in a blue that gives target creature Shroud until end of turn, uh, but it can also be cycled for one blue. Alright, so let's go over the deck stats and the cost. If this deck has a value of around $110 to $160 right now on TCG Player or Card Kingdom, uh, depending on the condition and the printing of the individual cards. Our average CMC is 3.32, but because you'll be cycling a lot of the cards for 1 or 2 mana, the average CMC is a bit deceptive and not really indicative of how the deck plays. We have 38 lands, and 13 of them have cycling, and we have 41 total cards with cycling. We have 5 sources of card draw. That may seem low, but with all of our cycling cards and the recursion we generate from our commanders, we won't often be running out of cards in hand. And most of that additional card draw that we do have comes from permanents that will generate us a steady uh, flow of card advantage over time. We have 20 synergy pieces that reward us whenever we cycle something, either directly, like Faith of the Devoted, or indirectly from the card draw or discard, for example, Hoof Prince of the Stag. And of course, many of these synergy pieces have cycling themselves, should we not need them at the moment. We are running 7 cards that generate creature tokens. Uh, most of these again will trigger when we cycle something, although Tormod the Desecrator is an exception here, as this one will generally trigger from our commander's abilities. We have 8 pieces of ramp. We're running 4 to 5 board wipes, uh, depending on whether or not you consider Archfiend of Ifnir to be a board wipe. And we have 9 single target removal spells. And that is Esper Cycling with Ghost of Ramirez Di Pietro and Ravos Salt Thunder. Again, I think this is a pretty reasonable alternative to Gavi Nestwarden, who's currently the commander for over half of all cycling-themed decks right now on ADH Rec. Uh, with this Esper Cycling deck, you'll trade some of the raw power of Gavi's cycling cost reduction for improved resilience and long-game staying power by repeatedly recurring your cycling cards from the graveyard so that you can cycle them over and over again. But that is all I have for today. Uh, please like this video or subscribe if you found any of this useful. I'll be posting weekly videos describing all sorts of unconventional ways that you can build your commander decks, from budget alternatives to deck techs to top 10 lists. Uh, next time we'll be going over yet another Commander Legends deck tech, this time featuring Imoti, Celebrant of Bounty. And thank you for watching.